What else have we got? Ben Hur. Now, actually, we uh, acute listeners will know that we don't actually need a review because of the way you actually said Ben Hur. Okay, so from the way I said Ben Hur, what's my review going to be? I don't think you're going to be thrilled by it. Okay, but that's just you. If if you, if it was really really good, I'd have said. What's the film going to be? And you said instantly, without a pause, you said Ben Hur, and then you've gone with so an pause, inflection and straight in. But the with pause gave it Ben Hur. Okay. Well, the, the thing with Ben Hur is this: when when the trailers first came out, and people were saying, you know, you can't remake Ben Hur. Uh, you know, it's a classic 1959s. Although, of course, that's a remake of a remake itself, because this whole thing goes back to there's a novel from 1880 which Lou Wallace published. There's a silent version. Well, there's a, there's the very famous silent version from 1925. There's an unauthorized silent version from 1907 about which Nat Siegeloff, who was a very interesting writer who I like very much. Nat who? Nat Siegeloff. Nat Siegeloff. Nat Siegeloff. Um, he sent me an email, because we were discussing something else, to say um, that that version produced by the Canem Company uh, was done without the authorization of the Lou Wallace estate and was, therefore, the first successful copyright infringement suit in the motion picture industry. After that, movie makers had to license rights for films adapted from copyrighted novels, which is fascinating. But even before that... Ben-Hur was a stage play. There's a famous Broadway uh, stage play, 1899, and a production it was seen by millions of people over because it toured. You know, and it was a huge, big spectacle that involved live horses cantering in front of a cyclorama with a, a moving floor. So when they did the chariot race, they literally did the chariot race in the cinema. Wow. Exactly. Wow. I mean, you know, talk about 3D, right? That's 3D. So now we have this new version by uh, Timo, Timo Beckmambatov with a script which is co-written by uh, John Ridley uh, with Jack Houston and Toby Kebbell as Judah Ben-Hur and Masala, one Roman, one Jewish. This time they're adoptive brothers. Everybody is familiar with the story, these two characters, different ways. Everything's going to end up in a sort of rival-like chariot race. And during the course of the narrative in the background, there is going to be this biblical thing going on because originally Ben-Hur, uh, A Tale of the Christ. History turns our central characters against each other, leading up to the climactic chariot race, which is the thing for which Ben-Hur has so long been famous as a clip. People of Jerusalem, friends of Rome, we celebrate the power of man! You will see them race for glory. You will see them fight for honor. You will see them die for you! Should have stayed away. You should have killed me. Can't finish a clip with should have stayed away. Should have, should have killed me. Never knowingly understated our team. So here's the thing. Um, there are, as I said, so many different versions of Ben-Hur, of which this is undoubtedly the most boring. Um, spectacle has always been a thing in terms of the, the, the productions of Ben-Hur. And this is spectacularly dull, which is peculiar because for one thing, I mean, if you compare it to the 59 version, it's about half the length, but it is, it feels so much longer. And one of the strange things about it is that in the, the sort of the climactic action sequences, the race stuff, I mean, there was so much stuff written about the, the, the 1959 version and how dangerous all those uh, stunts were and how, you know, what happened when they were filming the chariot race and, all that stuff, and I remember seeing Ben Hur in the, in the cinema in the Odeon in the 1970s when they did one of the one of the many reissues of it. And uh, now you have this other version, which actually, if you you know look into it and you read about it, they talk about wanting to do it physically, you know, wanting to do the chariot stuff, wanting to do as many you know as many of the actual stunt stuff physically as possible. Of course, when it comes to things like horse falls and everything, that's all done with digital and the you know the scenery the, the the huge arena that they're in that's digitally pasted but what they've talked about is wanting the physicality of it which makes it all the stranger then that it just seemed utterly weightless and as i was watching it thinking you know why is it that this this doesn't have any heft because i'm no fan of uh, stunts that actually involve people or animals getting hurt so why is it that this isn't working and i think the reason is because the characters are just so two-dimensional so cardboard so cut out that you don't have anything invested in them and it comes down to that same thing that it always came down to before is that though action sequences only ever have any heft if you're interested in the people. And if you don't, if you're not interested in them, you know, you and I have talked about 
car chases in movies and why they're not interesting if they don't feel like they're about somebody. And that was definitely the case with this. It, and the other problem with it is that seeing it not that long after seeing Hail Caesar, you just keep thinking it's about to turn into Hail Caesar, Return of the Cross. I just kept expecting George Clooney to turn up and go, had we but uh, had had if we had ears but ears to hear. I mean, it's kind of cod in that way, which makes it weird that one of the things they're talking about, about the aesthetic of it, is filming those sequences like, you know, NASCAR and, you know, very sort of modern and... And yet it has this, so it falls down on so many levels that the the characters are utterly two-dimensional and just look like people harumphing around in a costume drama, that it's trying to be terribly modern but feels massively old-fashioned. It's much shorter than the most famous version, but it seems much longer. And it all looks like an outtake from Hail Caesar, which I enjoyed infinitely more. So... Unfortunately, it is a crushing bore. That said, it's not... I mean, if you compare it to a movie like um, Gods of Egypt, which was, to steal a phrase from uh, Louis Scriven today, who said that she was talking about another movie, she said, said that movie was like a, an explosion in a stupidity factory. I mean, that's what Gods of Egypt was like. This, this isn't like that. This is just like... <sighs> really? 